We have six important announcements to share with you this morning, and I'll start with tvOS. Amazon is coming to the TV app and, and all Apple TVs later this year with Amazon Prime Video. Let's talk about Apple Watch. And I'm very excited to introduce watchOS 4 today. And we've created a new watch face, which is powered by Siri intelligence. This is so in the morning, I might see, for example, commute time. If I rotate the crown, I can see more information from Siri. Now, sometimes you might like kind of less information and more graphics. And that's the soul of the new kaleidoscope face. It displays a beautiful symmetrical pattern that slowly changes throughout the day. And I'm really excited to welcome Woody and Jesse and Buzz. In watchOS 4, activity notifications are more personalized to you to help you close your rings more often. We've added a little bit more fun when you close your rings or earn an achievement. Now we've also enhanced the workout app. Quick starts right up front. You can just tap and go. And we're now enhancing the pool swim workout with auto sets. We've also created some custom motion and heart rate algorithms for a new workout type called high intensity interval training. It's now super easy to just swipe over during a current workout and then add another one by pressing the plus button. We're enabling for the first time two-way data exchange in real time with gym equipment. And when you start and stop the workout in your gym machine, it does the same thing on your watch. Apple Watch enabled equipment will be rolling out starting this fall. With the new music app, we're going to automatically sync music for you based on what you love to listen to. And you can just navigate by rotating the digital crown. The first thing I want to show you is the new dock. I can now vertically scroll through my recently used apps, like the new music app. And now in watchOS 4, I can pick a playlist that automatically starts with my workout. Let's do it. I can quickly swipe to the left and control my music right here. There's a lot more coming in watchOS 4, including, for example, a new flashlight in the control center, which you can also use as a blinking safety light when you're doing an evening run. It's including more support for apps running in the background, faster app responsiveness, and some new UI capabilities. So for example, continuous glucose monitoring directly from Dexcom sensor to your watch. Developer preview is available today, so you can get going. And there's a free upgrade for everyone across all watches this fall. Now, let's talk about Mac OS Hi Sierra. <laughs> Hi Sierra is all about deep technologies that provide a powerful platform for future innovations on the Mac. And it starts with Safari. Safari is the world's fastest desktop browser with Hi Sierra. Don't worry about it because we have autoplay blocking in Safari. Safari has intelligent tracking prevention. Your privacy, your browsing history is your own. So next I wanna talk about some refinements to mail and it starts with search. We're using Spotlight to identify your top hits. So, and if you're into using mail in full screen, well now we support split view for your compose window. It's a great way to compose mail. And mail's more efficient than ever. It actually uses 35% less disk space for storing your mail. Photos has some great new organization and editing tools. There's a persistent sidebar and a new view that has all your imports in chronological order. You can filter by your keywords, by uh, your favorites, by just media types like video. It recognizes far more faces automatically using advanced convolutional neural network. When you put effort into categorizing and naming people, well, that's now synchronized automatically across all your devices. Great enhancements to editing, including curve and selective color. Well, now when you punch out to that other editing tool, all of your edits automatically synchronize right back to your photo library. Apple pioneered printed book, and now we're opening this up to third parties, all based on projects right inside of photos. Pleased to announce that we're bringing the Apple file system to Mac OS as our new default. Modern features like instant file and directory cloning. Well, we're gonna go up to the file menu, we're gonna sub-duplicate, and we're done. Video, and there's a new standard to support this. It's H.265 or HEVC, 40% better compression than H.264, and hardware acceleration of HEVC for the newest Macs. Now I want to return to our main story, which is graphics. And graphics are all about the GPU. And we have a new version to announce today, Metal 2. Great optimizations and new APIs that, when adopted, deliver another 10 times improvement in draw call throughput. And we're so excited about the advances in Metal 2 that we've taken the Mac Windows server and put it on top of Metal, accelerating things like mission control. And some of our most challenging system animations are now buttery smooth all the time. So we're also using it for machine learning. So we have Metal performance shaders that accelerate all kinds of deep learning algorithms. Now, another piece of Metal news today is metal for external graphics. So you want to take advantage of the incredible Thunderbolt I.O. Now we're starting with the developer, developer kit that'll be available today, a Thunderbolt 3 enclosure with a high performance AMD GPU. And so we're bringing metal for VR to High Sierra. Now metal is delivering a VR optimized display pipeline and we're optimizing our pro apps like Final Cut for doing things like editing spherical video right inside the VR environment. Valve, they're bringing the Steam VR SDK to the Mac. We work with Unity and Unreal to bring their engines for VR to the Mac. A bunch of fantastic refinements. Now, Mac OS High Sierra is available for all of you today as a developer beta, public beta available later this month. 
And of course, it's shipping to everyone as a free upgrade this fall on all systems that support Sierra. But we're gonna make them even better. So these new displays are now gonna be 500 nits. That's 43% brighter than the previous generation. We're gonna support 10-bit dithering, which means these displays can reproduce up to a billion colors. So the whole line is moving to Intel's seventh generation core processor, also known as Kaby Lake. In addition, these iMacs are getting a boost when it comes to memory capacity. So we're gonna now make our Fusion Drive standard on all 27-inch configs. And it's also gonna be standard on the high-end 21.5-inch config as well. And the iMacs are getting an I.O. upgrade as well, because we're giving them two USB-C connectors which support Thunderbolt 3. Start with the entry-level iMac by way of Intel's Iris Plus graphics, which now has 64 megabytes of VDRAM. It's up to 80% faster in graphics. And we're gonna be moving to discrete graphics and making it standard on all 4K iMacs. Now lastly, we have our 27-inch iMac. So it's gonna have these Radeon Pro 500 series GPUs with up to eight gigabytes of VRAM. Let's get myself up. I can also use this to rotate the world around me. It's really cool how Metal 2 unlocks Unreal's advanced rendering feature set on the Mac. Wow, yeah, really nice. Here's the line, and, but there's one more change. We're gonna have a 4K iMac that starts at just $12.99. But the updates don't stop with just the iMac, because we're gonna have a new configuration of the 13-inch MacBook Pro that also starts at just $12.99. And so we've been working really hard to see just how far we can push the iMac. Now, this isn't gonna be shipping until the end of the year. This will be the most powerful Mac we've ever made. And they came up with this really efficient dual centrifugal fan solution, so the iMac Pro is gonna ship with an eight-core Xeon processor. It's also gonna ship with a 10-core Xeon processor. So we're gonna offer it with up to 18 cores. So the iMac Pro is gonna use AMD's Radeon Vega graphics. This is their brand new workstation class graphics architecture. It's gonna offer up to 11 teraflops of single precision compute power. So that means the iMac Pro can deliver up to 22 teraflops of half precision computation. So we're gonna let you configure it with up to 128 gigabytes of ECC memory. Up to four terabytes of three gigabyte per second SSD, including four Thunderbolt 3 ports, and for the first time ever in any Mac, built-in 10 gigabit ethernet. There's so much more we don't even have time to get into. Things like a 1080p FaceTime camera, a user configurable Visa mount option, uh, two times wider AVX instructions, and even a UHS-2 SD card slot. And we're gonna price it at just $49.99. All right, let's talk about iOS and turn it up to 11. We have a lot to talk about, the iMessage apps and stickers. And now in iOS 11, we're making them more discoverable than ever with this redesigned app drawer. You can bring them up, scroll through them, and tap into any app. Now the big story with messages, though, is messages in iCloud. Well, all of your conversations are automatically synchronized. And that's Apple pay for person-to-person -person payments. So you can send and receive money right in your transcript. And of course, when you send it, you authenticate securely. Next, let's turn to Siri. We've used deep learning now to create a really natural and expressive voice for Siri, and I'd like you to hear it. Here's the forecast for the next 10 days. Sunny, sunny, and sunny. So Siri has a great new visual interface as well. And it's able to provide you with follow-up questions and answers with just a tap. Now, Siri also has a new capability, which is translation. And Siri can say, Totally. Siri Kit can now do more than ever. You can do task management, make notes in Evernote, do banking in City Mobile, or even bring up a QR code. It understands the context. Give us a time to leave notification based on our calendar and where we are, and even help us make a calendar appointment based on something we've just booked inside of Safari on the web. We're using HEVC, which is giving us up to two times better compression for camera captured videos. And we're applying these same techniques to replace JPEG capture with what we call HEIF, high efficiency image format. It's based on HEVC and it also provides awesome quality images at half the size. And we're taking the depth information that we can capture with two cameras and exposing it to developers with a new depth API, which has allowed them to do incredibly fun and artistic photos, like this, Photos app. And now it can do more than ever. It uses a machine learning to identify things like sporting events, even weddings, anniversary, but now watch them in portrait, taking full advantage of the height of your display. So you can now trim your live photos, the video around the still, you can mark any part of the video as your key photo, and so much more. And what you'll notice is Control Center is now a single page. Now, of course, it has simple switches. I'll just do an orientation lock so you can adjust volume like this. 3D touch in on slider like this and get access to more controls. I get access to even more features. I can actually now swipe back down. I'm actually on my lock screen seeing those notifications, but I can get at all my other notifications just by scrolling up. And sometimes the best shot wasn't the still. Well now, we can go into edit mode, we could trim this video if we want, but we also can capture just the frame we want and make that 
our key photo. This girl blowing a bubble. But wouldn't it be greater, great if she could just keep blowing that bubble? But wouldn't it be better if it bounced? Go into the effects here and select long exposure. Now what's great is I can also rotate my phone now. We can see it mentions certain locations in Iceland. I think this one is called Snifelsness. There it is, Snifelsness. Enhanced information for when you get there to the mall. So we have detailed floor plans now, directory and search, and we let you browse by floor. And we're also bringing the support to air, major airports. You can see where security is so you can plan all of these airports to start and again, building out more over time. So now in the upper left, you can even see your speed limit. I hope you're paying attention to that. And lane guidance, so you know which lane to be in to make your next move when navigating. Do not disturb while driving. Do not disturb while driving. That you're not receiving notifications while you're driving. But of course, you might be sitting in the back seat, in which case you can tell us I'm not driving, you can get through. You can also enable select people to break through if it's especially urgent. You can have the peace of mind that you can get contacted and they can reply urgent and that message will go through. Next up, HomeKit, and that's speakers, and access them via our new AirPlay 2 protocol. It builds multi-room audio in throughout iOS. And with Apple Music, we have a new feature called Share It Up Next. So maybe your friend wants to contribute to that playlist? Well, they can do that. All these speaker makers have announced upcoming support for AirPlay 2. Your Apple TV can be played to from your iPhone or iOS device and Mac anywhere in the home. And of course, if you turn on your Apple TV, it can control playback home-wide, including using Siri. We're providing a great developer API, so third-party audio apps and iOS can all get in on the multi-room audio fun. So now, in Apple Music, you'll see indicators if this is music your friends are listening to. We're also providing a new API, Music Kit, for Apple Music. Full access to the Apple Music service, both on device and from your cloud service. The App Store. We're going to completely redesign it. A brand new App Store. It's going to be such a great place for customers to discover your apps every single day. Games, the biggest area of the App Store has its own dedicated space now. And since games have their own tab, now apps have their own tab. The first thing I see is our top story. Let's check it out by tapping on the card. Our redesigned app page. It's more beautiful and more useful. Now Metal 2 and HEVC are coming to iOS as well. But there's more, and it starts with machine learning. And we're doing it via a set of new APIs. Starts with the Vision API, which provides face tracking, face detection, landmarks, all of these core features we use inside of our apps. And a natural language API that provides capabilities like tokenization and named entity recognition. Core ML provides high performance implementations of deep neural networks, recurrent neural networks, convolutional neural networks, support vector machines. And we have a new core technology called AR Kit to bring it to all of you. And I'd like to show it to you in a demo now. Got some, some steam in there coming off the cup. Now, I can add other objects to the scene, and these things can actually interact. Let's add a lamp. And I want you to watch when I turn the lamp up on the dynamic shadows here. AR Kit, the largest AR platform in the world. And we got him. Ooh. Number five is, of course, iPad. Let's take a look. This is a new iPad Pro. 10 and a half inch retina display incredibly compact design that still weighs just one pound. Perfect size to allow us to display a full-size on-screen keyboard, full-size smart keyboard as well. And both sizes are going to get really incredible new displays today. They're packed with incredible features like True Tone for automatic white balance. But our biggest breakthrough is a feature we call ProMotion. We've doubled that maximum refresh rate to an incredible 120 hertz. All of your motion content on your screen is gonna be smoother, more responsive, and it reduces our latency to an industry best 20 milliseconds. Another breakthrough of ProMotion is that these become the first mobile displays to be able to dynamically adjust their refresh rate. Inside them, they're powered by the A10X Fusion chip. The A10X has a six core CPU, three high performance cores, three high efficiency cores, all automatically managed by the Apple Performance Controller. It also has a 12 core GPU. Infinity Photo for iPad is available on the App Store from today. The same all day, 10 hour battery life that our iPad users love. Features the latest camera system from our iPhone 7. The front facing cameras from the iPhone 7 as well with all of its great features. The iPad Pro supports USB 3 which means that you're gonna get faster transfers with your USB and SD camera adapters. We also support fast charging, which means any of our USB-C charge adapters will now allow you to charge at half the time. And we have great new smart covers. We have available in polyurethane, and then we're bringing back the popular leather as well. And then we've designed an all new leather sleeve with a built-in storage for your Apple Pencil. Both, both sizes will now start with 64 gigabytes of memory. And the 10 and a half inch with 64 gigs will now be at 649, half a terabyte of storage in an iPad. 
They'll start shipping next week. The largest iOS release for iPad we've ever done, the dock. It is more powerful than ever. You can fill it with apps. On the right, there's a predictive area. Figures out what you're gonna use next, including your continuity apps. Some in the dock from anywhere, right from the bottom of the screen. It's how it's used for multitasking. We can pull an app out just like that. Now, of course, you can snap your apps. It's the new app switcher preserves all of your spaces with your app pairing, drag and drop. You can drag images, you can drag text, you can drag URLs, you can multi-select and multi-hand drag. It's a drag fest. And so we made the keyboard even more productive as well. Flick on keys to access punctuation and numbers all without switching planes. Now, we have a new app to introduce, Files. It brings together all your files on your iPad. It supports everything you'd expect, nested folders, spring loading, list view, favorites, search, tags to not only iCloud, it also supports third-party storage providers like Box, Dropbox, OneDrive, and Google Drive. So I'm gonna start a drag, but watch this. With my other hand, I'm gonna tap. I can add to this selection. Wipe up with my other hand into multitasking. Move over to mail and drop. List view that can sort them by size or let's uh, sort by date. Multi-select, just like this. Drop them in. Drag it right in to my favorites. And these are synced across all of my devices. If I tap and hold, I get access to my recent assets. I can just Pick this up, drop it down, just like that. I wanna talk about Apple Pencil. Now it starts with markup, because you can mark up anything you can quick look. You can take Safari content, we create it into a continuous scrolling view that you can mark up. Any app that supports printing, when you take a screenshot, we'll create a thumbnail down on the bottom of the screen. If you tap it, you go instantly into markup. Now, we've also integrated Pencil deeply into notes. Just a tap of the pencil to the lock screen and you're right back into your note. And we've made your note, handwritten text, searchable. Inline drawings right there. So notes now has a built-in document scanner. You can mark it up right with your pencil. Mark up in the mail as well. And you can see there it's already found my note as a top hit, even with my atrocious handwriting. We'll just tap on that and we're back with the notes. Now iOS 11 is available to all of you developers today. We've got one last thing to talk to you about. A sneak peek at it this morning. HomePod. The HomePod is just under seven inches tall, covered in a seamless 3D mesh fabric that has incredible acoustic properties. Along the bottom, the seven array beam form tweeter pack that's packed with seven tweeters, each with their own individual driver. It has a really big woofer, a four inch woofer, upward facing with a large motor to move a lot of air. It has automatic bass equalization and dynamic software modeling so that as we turn the volume up, it's free from distortion. Now all of this is controlled by an Apple A8 chip is inside HomePod. It's perhaps the biggest brain ever in a speaker. It does real time acoustic modeling, audio beam forming, and multi-channel echo cancellation. You don't have to know what any of that is, just know that it sounds incredible. And it intelligently and automatically detects the space it's within. You should see what it's like when you set up two and they automatically work together to give this incredible spacious sound that really is the power to rock your house. It works with an array of six microphones around the middle. So as you talk to it and you say those magic words, hey Siri, you see a waveform light up on top and now it can respond to your commands and help serve up the music you want to hear. <laughs> Play something new. Who's singing on this track? Something I ask all the time. Who's playing drums on this track? There are other domains as well. We've worked hard to pick the first ones that we think matter most in a product like HomePod. So of course, you can play your podcasts, but it can also do things like give you news, give you weather, traffic, sports. You can speak to your HomePod and control your HomeKit devices. Turn off the lights in the bedroom. And if you've set up scenes in HomeKit, you can control those as well. So for example, it has that magic phrase, hey Siri. Until you say it, nothing's being sent to Apple for $349. It comes in white and space gray. It'll start shipping this December. I hope everyone here has a fantastic week. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>